come out, support my girl, Lady Shine. Make sure y'all tune in. Um, this is the champ, Alicia Bumgarner, coming through. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. It was something that I wanted to bring from me to you, from me to you. <laughs> and um, it was, um, you know, on the on what's happening with Terrence Crawford and and Errol Spence Jr. finally getting it, getting it on. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. Oh, oh, oh. Anyway. <laughs> And I remember when the fight was uh, being spoken about initially and then it fell to pot. I mean, this fight is supposed to have happened at least like, like three, four years ago. Five. Okay, it's four, five. And um, I remember watching Teddy Atlas, you know, say he had Spence. Nothing wrong with that. Spence winning the fight if they would ever fall. Yeah. And then I started seeing, like, new stuff of uh, when it got announced now, new stuff of what Atlas was saying. So I thought, let me go and find this said, you know, uh, Eddie, um, Eddie, Teddy, um, stating that, you know, he's got spent. And I was trawling and I, and I couldn't find it. And I, and I, t I thought, no, nah, Shannon, I just thought, forget it. And then, um, I don't know, something hit me again today. And I thought, let me just have another look. And I still couldn't find it. And I was like, where is it? But then I found something as recent as 14 days ago, which is two weeks. Stand by. Yeah, this guy was an Olympian. He went to London and beat Kel Brook. This guy, you know, this guy has done everything you've asked of him. Uh, I believe what I've seen. I got you. I don't think okay. it's a mirage. Okay, I got you. I, I, I believe that when he wants to be relentless, he's relentless. I believe that he's a terrific body puncher. I just believe that he's more than just that, that he's technically sound in a lot of areas, that he can switch it up, that he can be very versatile, he can counter, he can box, he can go get you. Yeah, yeah. I believe he can do all those things. And I believe that he believes that's where it comes that's from. That's That okay. he believes okay. that he's always going to do that. Okay. And that's enough for me. And right? you believe he'll even be Crawford, right? I think you've said that before. Yeah, I mean, listen, it'd be very interesting. It'd be very interesting. I love Crawford. It'd be very interesting. Crawford, Crawford is, you know, he brings a different dimension to it. I mean, you're talking about a guy who's tall and long, stepped up in weight classes, you know, and a guy who's a winner, a guy who's dynamic, but a guy who goes about his business in a different way, where he controls range where, you know, he looks to set traps. But then he believes too, Crawford. That's what makes, that would be an intriguing fight for me. Because that son of a gun, he believes too, when it gets down to it, to being a junkyard dog, man, he could bite with the best of them. Because, because you try to take something from him, he'll say, you know what, I like to control range. I like to be out here. I like to counter. I like to have it my way. Just like you guys like to have a buffet and all things when, when I hope he put some food out for you guys. Not so much. <laughs> say, say you Talk like to him about that. Yeah, really, really, that ain't right. But everyone wants to have what is most comfortable for themselves. And yeah, Crawford would love to have that. But when he don't have that, and he has to go the other place, he has shown you, and I've seen it, where he'll say, freak it, I'll fight you right here. I'll do whatever I got. And he's got one of the things that might even be better than what Spence has, and you didn't expect me to say that. He's got tremendous instincts. He's got, you know, Spence has, and I stand by my word, Spence is physical, he's technically solid, he's an Olympian, you know, he's put together the right way. And, and he mentally has that result. He believes, but so does Crawford, but he's got this, he's got an instinctual presence to him that I haven't seen with too many fighters. Did, doesn't he do even some of the things the, the guys in the black and white did? The, you know the, what he does? Sorry. He does what my mentor, who I think was the, hey, I'm prejudiced. He was the greatest boxing guy ever, Customano. Said that the special ones do. He makes it up as he does it. Not too many people can do that. He, he's, he's like a Louis Armstrong that can create a new tone right there on the stage with the horn that you never heard before. And that's what Crawford can do. And that's pretty damn special. I can't just close my eyes and say, hey, 
you know, I favored Spence in that fight, favored Spence in that fight, but... So you're going to say, yeah, so what, Shan? Yeah, he's, he's, got, he's got Spence. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know. No problem. No hay problema conmigo. Um, and then, as I was looking at that one 14 days ago, it's got up. And I thought, I know he spoke to, shouts out to Fight Hub as well. Four, 11 days ago. Let me click. Because the caption says, I've got Crawford. Stand by. Spence and Crawford. We finally got it. I, I don't know if it's a little too late for, for some people, but you know, for you, Teddy, uh, how do you see the fight? I've talked to a lot of trainers. A lot of trainers are picking uh, Terrence Crawford just because of his fight IQ. But how do you see it? I, it's a fight that should be made. It's finally being made. Thank goodness it's, it's not five years too late. It might be two years. But they still, you can't say that these guys, either one of them, that their skills have eroded to a place of notice. Um, so that's good. Again, Pacquiao. no market erosion. I, you gotta, you gotta love both. They're both undefeated. You gotta love Spence as far as size. He's the naturally bigger guy. You hear that all the time. And he's a big welterweight. He's a horse. You know, if he was a, was in the NFL, he'd probably be a fullback, you know, because he's, he's, he, he, he'll run you over if he has to. He's strong. But he's also more than that. He's got the pedigree, the amateur pedigree in the Olympics. He's got all that experience, all that with international experience, with different styles. And when he beat Mikey Garcia, a smaller man, but when he beat him, he took Mikey Garcia's greatest asset away from him, his ability to control range and box. To counter punch, everyone thought, "All right, Mikey Garcia is going to look to counter the bigger guy, catch him, come in, step out." You know, and all he couldn't do it. Spence dominated. You know why? Because he his jab, because he's got a better IQ. Everyone gives Crawford the credit, and he deserves it. But Spence has a pretty good one too. He's not dumb. He uses the jab. He out jab Mikey Garcia, who if he had an edge, it was supposed to be that he was smaller, he was faster. He'd be a little bit trickier in those kind of dimensions. Use a jab, as I said, set with trap. his southpaw jab. So he he can go get you. He can go to the body well, which is very important when you're fighting a smaller guy, naturally smaller, to impose your strength on a smaller man's body by going to his body. Mm -hmm. Very important. Uh, he can set, he can counter, he can box. And as I said, he can just go track you down. So he's pretty dimensional too. Crawford, a lot of people like him. His boxing IQ, he's dimensional. Again, he can fight with you. He can box. He can. He likes to control range with his longer arms where, you know, he, he can keep you out of range. Good for him, bad for you. Make you pay for real estate. You try to get in. He goes back four inches, you know, as you come in two inches. And now he makes you pay for the real estate with, with a combination of punches. And he carried his power up with him, which is really important. He, you know, he started at junior lightweight, went to lightweight, or, or started at lightweight, went to junior welter, and then went to welter. But he carried his power. Not everyone does that. So you have an argument, which is good. But the where it guy. separates for me is that Crawford, and I've watched them. I actually did a piece for ESPN years ago of where I broke down his early fights and I had him in a studio where we put a boxing ring and we watched the fights together. And I said to him in some of his formative fights on his way up, I said uh, one was against Gamboa. Gamboa was a former world champ. He was definitely a little past himself, but it was the first real test with a name for Crawford on his way up. And this is a guy in Gamboa who was a gold medalist from the great national Cuban team. You know, they had to, they had to defect to come over here, have a life. 
and in this great country. And he did. He came over here. He won a world title. He had a life uh, for his family that he wouldn't have had, quite frankly, in Cuba. And he was very fast. And again, he was diminished a little bit. He was he was he was going towards the twilight. And Crawford's winning the fight. And then I forget what round it was. Somewhere on the seventh, eighth, whatever it was, he gets caught. He gets caught. I believe it was with a right hand. And he gets caught, he gets wobbled. And as he's wobbled and he's going backwards, I watch it, I break it down to slow motion before I got with him to make sure I had it right. Because when I saw it, I said, holy smokes, am I really seeing this? Because nobody ever brought it up. Am I really seeing this? Let me run it back. And as he went back being wobbled, he knew that he got caught because he was in the southpaw stance. He switched hits a lot. And he was in the southpaw stance, and he got caught a right hand. So as he's fall back, he turns to orthodox. Now he knows that he won't be as vulnerable to the right hand, number one. And number two, he knows the inclination, the, the, the instinct of Gamboa. The instinct of Gamboa is to load up on the right hand now to land it again, and he might get a little heavy with it, a little fat with it. And if he does, he's got the left hook now from the orthodox position that he didn't have before. He's got it there to counter the right hand and catch him. And I'll be damned he did that. So I ran it over with, with Spence. I said, did you, did you know you did this? And he looks at it, he smiled, he goes, no, not till now. I said... <laughs> You, my friend, and I only give compliments if I, I try to anyway, if they're deserved. And I said, you, my friend, might be the most instinctive. And there's a hell of a compliment coming from me. I've seen a lot of fights. You might be the most instinctive fighter I've ever seen. I've seen a few. And a lot of them were back in the 30s and the 40s on tape, quite frankly. And the 80s. Well, Go to that skinnier body of the smaller man. And his know, volume. His yeah. volume, yeah. Right. That that you're gonna get to him. I get it. But you know what? Crawford's gonna have something to say. When while well, you're trying to get to him with an uppercut, with with whatever it is, a counter shot from lefty or from righty, he does carry the power. And he is that junkyard dog where even though both of them are millionaires now. And I'm, and I know it's important to both of them in a personal level anyway, which is supposed to be in a legacy way. But he's one of those guys that, kind of like yeah, Michael Jordan, where, you know, no matter how much money, no matter how many, you know, accolades that Michael Jordan obviously, you know, put on the trophy shell and and accomplished in his career right on the court. Every time he, it, it was like he was stealing money from his mother. I mean, like, you know, he, he's going he gonna to destroy you. And, like, where does that come from? Wherever it comes from, Crawford has some of that. And because of those things, I, I would have to – I'm going with, with Crawford. And like I started to say, I like a decision, but I wouldn't be shocked. As good as the chin is the, and the toughness of Spence, the relentless ability of Spence, but I wouldn't be shocked if Crawford hurt him late in the fight. Mm. I find that I know people are entitled to change their mind, but they change their mind within 12, 13, 14, within a three-day period. I mean, I wish I could find the older stuff, and I know if I really done my due diligence, I've got, I remember on record Teddy Atlas being vehemently stating that I, I got, I got, I got Spence. I got Spence. I'm walking past the camera. Um, and I can't find it. I don't know if they've taken it down and been like, you know what, save him some, you know, dignity. Um, or I just need to do, you know, more of my own work. And I just thought it was weird how he said that on the 14th day. You know, and he was just like, yeah, I'm still going to... He gave uh, Terrence's credit, but he was just like, no, I'm going to... I've got, I've got, I'm going to... Basically, I'm going with Spence. And then three days after that, he says a similar story and um, states, you know, some of the bits of the... Uh, what was the bit that he said? Oh, I forgot. You know, he's used a bit of the same story 
And even though I agree that Bud is special, like he's then said, you know, that he's going with Bud. And I just thought, okay, flip flopper. But the first caption was that Spence is special. Flipper. Flipper. Is in the build is in. It's a flip flop build is in. Oh, flipper. So I just thought I'd bring that from me to you, from you to me. That's what you, you're you to me when it's in the comments. I'm me to you when I bring it to you. So it's you dares, Rodgers, you dares. I just, let me know about your thoughts below. Bars. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Yeah, I just thought that was like, mmm, Teddy. 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 But sometimes, you know, people come to the light. Walk into the light, Carolyn. Sometimes, you know. Walk into the light. Sometimes they find their way to the light eventually. And, you know, I get why he's saying Crawford. Because Crawford's the better fighter. But um, it was just... Even this way shot me within a three-day, 72-hour period, sir. You, you totally flip-flopped. The epitome of flip-flopping. Uh, yeah, that was a flip-flop to the nth degree. You know, you look up in the dictionary, you look up flip-flopping, -flop and you see Teddy Atlas. Well, in there. What if he's gone with, because he feels that it's the truth, or he feels that's more of the popular opinion? Because it is the popular opinion, to so stand by. But, yeah. Whatever. The whatever is in the boots. So, I guess Flipper has flip-flopped on the big fish. And now he's Moby Dick. Hmm. Anyway, I'm gone. Hmm. Hey, girl, it's Leah the Sham Rep Nun. <laughs> Come box with Shan. Flip, 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 flip. I'll flip instead of salute, will I? Gyan! The flippers in the boot dozen. You can always... I, I'm going to have to find that 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 dolphin, Teddy. We're going to have to wear dolphins. Flipper, the dolphin. Teddy Atlas, you flip-flop. You flop-flip. Yes! <laughs>